Morning. Alors, euh, bonjour. Merci d'être venu. Euh, je suis Alan Rock. Je suis ici avec euh, mon ami et ancien collègue dans le gouvernement, l'honorable Erwin Cutler. Et nous sommes ici, nous deux, pour euh, accueillir, euh, pour supporter et pour présenter euh, l'invité d'honneur, euh, c'est-à-dire le procureur général de la Cour pénale internationale, euh, Monsieur Karim Khan, qui est ici. We'd like to introduce uh, uh, the, the prosecutor, give him an opportunity to speak about his work, and he will be delighted to answer questions you may have. We're very, very happy that he's making this visit to Canada. Yesterday, we had a, a full day of meetings on the Hill, uh, and last night, uh, the prosecutor uh, gave a speech uh, to uh, a sold-out crowd, uh, talking about his, his perspectives on international justice, Uh, a remarkable speech, a great, a great presentation. And uh, nous sommes ravis uh, de l'avoir parmi nous aujourd'hui ici à Ottawa. Alors, uh, je vous présente uh, uh, Karim Khan, le procureur général de la Cour pénale internationale. Karim. Bonjour. Uh, dear uh, Alan and, and Erwin, I'm really lucky uh, to have had the support these yesterday and today and even before from two such eminent Canadians as Professor Alan Rock and the redoubtable Professor Erwin Kotler, and I think their contribution to international law, to justice in Canada, but also much more widely. The quest for human rights to be respected is one that deserves a particular mention. Uh, this is my first official visit to this great country of Canada. I've attended and I've travelled throughout Canada many times, Banff, Lake Louise, Jasper, Vancouver, Calgary, Toronto but I've never come as prosecutor uh, of the ICC. And it's an important trip because this is a moment that is particularly critical. And the best of Canadian values, which is diversity, which is inclusivity, which is principles of justice, and an attempt to use the resources of nature, the environment, these God-given blessings with equity and fairly to allow every individual to fulfill their hopes is not divorced from the quest for justice. Because so many parts of the world, this appears to be and is heaven. What we have in so many parts of the world, in Canada certainly, in New Zealand, in Europe, is heaven compared to the people that are living in refugee camps or trying to prepare food in buckets who don't have running water. And again, this very often is compounded not by fundamental unfairness, but because of conflict, because of the grab for power, the idea that we are gods on earth and we want to grab what we can, take what we want and subject when we will. This fundamental malady that's afflicting humanity throughout the ages led, and the bigotry, the persecution led to, of course, in the last century to the Nuremberg trials. It required the creation of the Yugoslav and Rwandan tribunals and the Special Court for Sierra Leone, and the International Criminal Court is a child of Nuremberg. And we need it now, unfortunately, as much as ever. But it requires support. So I've been really privileged. I've had very good support from Canada. You should be proud of the Canadian values, supporting the court. The first president of the court, Philip Kirsch, was a great Canadian. In addition to the two gentlemen by my side, we have, of course, the role of Louise Arbour in the Yugoslav Tribunal. We have the great... Canadian, Bob Bray, who is your permanent representative in New York, who's also the vice president of the Assembly of State Parties. So there's so many one could mention. But we need to make sure that we do justice around the world because the Rohingya in Myanmar, the people of Sudan and Libya, the people of the DRC, the people of Afghanistan or the Philippines or the Middle East, the people of Ukraine are looking to Canada, are looking to the United Nations, are looking to the International Criminal Court, not for fine words, but for justice. And I think this is why it's important to come here. Very good meetings with the Minister of Justice of Canada, the Foreign Minister of Canada. I had the distinct honour of speaking to some senators and members of the House of Commons. And I think this common cause, this common imperative to do justice is something we need to build upon and try to make sure we have these ripples that go from Canada to other parts of the world in which we bring more people on the side, not of politics, but on the sides of humanity. And if we do that, I think we will be vindicating the rights that are much more important than any individual one of us, 
It's something that actually is worth an existence and is worth a life. So those were my very brief remarks, and I'm, of course, open to any questions that uh, uh, you may have. Um, Milan Kret uh, from La Presse newspaper. Um, I saw that you met with Minister Jolie yesterday. I was curious to know uh, what, what you discussed. Well, the first was to thank her. Um, Canada has been a constant support. This is the 25th anniversary of the signing of the Rome Statute. And um, Canada has been in the front line throughout. During my term, I'm also really appreciative to the generosity of the people of Canada through its governments that uh, they've supported the court. And most recently, uh, the current government has provided 1.3 million uh, euros that, uh, to the trust fund so we can do better across our various situations. We have seven excellent Canadi Canadians that are seconded men and women. Uh, across a, a number of different teams in all different situations to make sure that we can do better, not for ourselves, not for our own performance, but as servants of humanity and servants of justice. And I think uh, that's something you all should be immensely proud of because talk is cheap. Action is what's difficult, and this is the time when collectively we need to work together in partnership to talk less and deliver more. And I think I wanted to thank Canada for that and also to emphasise um, we're midstream. We don't want to stop where we are because we'll drown. So we need to have the stamina, the perseverance and the focus to get to the other side to make sure that we vindicate the rights that are, that are so critical. It's the rights of children that are living in terror in so many parts of the world that don't know where they are, they don't know what language they're speaking. People, men and women that are suffering sexual and gender-based violence and bullying or religious persecution or targeting because of their ethnicity or their perceived political opinions. And we need to make these crimes extinct. And I think that's something that should bind us together. You know, the things that we should allow to live and protect our environment, our flora and fauna, the wonderful planet that we've inherited, we should try to render um, to our next generations. But some crimes, medieval crimes that afflict us, we should try to render those extinct. So we need to be, make some things upside down in a positive way. Let's preserve that that's worth preserving and extinguish that that burns the past generations, it should no longer burn our future generations and we should try to extinguish it so it doesn't burn those that are around us, our brothers and sisters around the world. You mentioned action, it's much more difficult regarding the situation in Ukraine. Um, the arrest warrant against President Vladimir Putin, it's one thing to have the arrest warrant, it's another thing to have it acted upon, have the prosecution and then the conviction. Uh, did you bite more than you could chew with this arrest warrant? No, I, I have very, I'm very cautious as a lawyer and as a prosecutor because I have a responsibility. Um, I'm an oss of the court and I will not, uh, God willing, ever bring a case for which I do not think the evidence is strong. And uh, the evidence uh, that we're required to show is reasonable grounds to believe crimes have been committed, but internally I have a much higher standard. We should uh, apply for warrants that we're happy to be executed immediately, realizing that the, pr the burden of proof very properly is beyond reasonable doubt. Uh, it will be rightfully tested in the crucible of the courtroom, and I don't uh, uh, cavil at that. In fact, I've been on the defence and for the victims as well as the prosecutor. It's absolutely necessary because that's what gives a verdict legitimacy so it can stand the test of time. So, um, um, you know, we have a number of options. Um, we can seek confirmation hearing in, in absence. And uh, our job also is to make sure we apply for warrants when the evidence is there, when we've looked at the you know, incriminating and the exonerating evidence equally. And I think those that say it's mission impossible, um, I understand where they're coming from. But people thought it was impossible to uh, indict, never mind uh, arrest uh, former President Milosevic or Karadic or Maladic or Jean Kabanda of Rwanda or Ki Simpan of Cambodia or Hissan Habre you know, Chad, it was tried in, in, uh, in Senegal. Um, so this, or Charles Taylor, who's now in Durham prison. So we've got to do our job and then the international community should do theirs. And that's a moment that is a litmus test. Are we all talk or is there collective action that in 2023, um, we want to render these crimes um, of international concern extinct? Are we finally going to honor the victims that have gone before and that are groaning and in tears today, that um, the promise of never, gain, never again will finally be vindicated. And that requires partnership. 
those of your viewers that are watching, your readers that are reading, politicians that have the power to make decisions on budgets and resource allocations, everybody must feel they have a duty, not only a right, a duty to speak up and speak out and act as friends of humanity because otherwise, by sitting on our seats and eating our cereals and watching things as a, a spectator, as the movie of life goes forward, we are failing in our fundamental obligations as human beings, which is to try to make the world better and not just be passive and indifferent as we have our stomachs that are full. Um, so I don't think it's biting off more than we can chew. I think we have to uh, feel that the dish of justice is some common um, staple diet for every human being everywhere in the world, and we need to pass that food much more widely. Uh, Dave Fraser of the Canadian Press. I'm wondering what role, if any, you see Canada playing in ensuring uh, South Africa enforces the arrest warrant when it has an opportunity to, to, to do so. Well, I think South Africa first is a respected state party. It wasn't dragged kicking and screaming to the International Criminal Court. I have ph phenomenal respect for South Africa for many reasons. Not only is it a, a great country with uh, uh, so much potential, but it is, for me, it's the country of Nelson Mandela and the greatness of heart that he showed with the terrible crime of apartheid, I don't think South Africa needs lessons from anybody. And I think uh, Canada, Canada is seeking to act consistently around the world. Other countries should do the same. And I have every confidence that South Africa, realizing what it is like to suffer, what it is like when rights are taken away, what it is like to be subjugated, as a matter of their sovereign independent will and as state parties that are committed to the rule of law because they own the law as much as Canada. Canada doesn't own it more than South Africa or South Africa doesn't own it less than the United Kingdom. The law is equally owned by all of humanity and I, do, I think South Africa, God willing, will, as an exercise of sovereign will, out of the values that it holds dear, pursuant to its constitution that is fantastically drafted in the shadow of apartheid, uh, they will decide that they own the law and they want to act on the law for their own people and for the world they want to bequeath to their children as well. I have more questions online, guys, so if you have any more. Well, thank you so much. Is it too? I would welcome comments from Mr. Roth on any role that you see in Canada playing in uh, uh, pressuring or, or helping ensure that South Africa enforces the arrest warrant. Well, as the, as the prosecutor said, uh, I think we can rely upon South Africa to do the right thing. Uh, Canada, as you know, from the outset, has been a strong supporter of the court, worked very hard 25 years ago uh, to see to the negotiation of the Rome Statute. And since the court began operating 20 years ago, uh, as the prosecutor noted, Canada has been a very prominent supporter, active participant in the court and its processes. I, I think uh, the international community knows where Canada stands in terms of the rule of law, the authority of the court, and accountability for alleged crimes. In terms of South Africa, uh, as you know, Canada has excellent relations with South Africa, but I share uh, respectfully share the view expressed by the prosecutor that we can count on South Africa uh, to do the right thing because of their commitment to the rule of law and because they share the same values that we do. Hello, go. Thank you very much for your attendance and we bid you good day.